So I was thinking about something that I had been thinking about for quite some time. And again, um, it ties back into season eight of American Horror Story and the subliminal messages that were in that season were absolutely, for me, they were very strong and they were very powerful. But before I get into that, there was something else I wanted to touch on right quick. The earthquakes in California that have been you know, taking place these past few days. Um, the first one was a 6.4, I believe, in Southern California. And then the second one was in, the second one was like a 7.1. That was, those were the two largest, if I'm not um, mistaken. And I know people who live in Southern California. Well, I know one person that lives in Southern California, a friend of mine. And I contacted him and asked him, was he okay? You know, what was going on? What was it, you know, just was he okay after the earthquake? He told me he barely felt anything. And what that tells me for those people who barely felt anything or who didn't feel anything at all, because if you are having a 6.4 earthquake or a 7.1 earthquake, anything above, I want to say 6.0 or anything above 5.9 or 5.9 and above, you should feel something. I know that California is, you know, more so equipped than any other place in the country to deal with earthquakes because they're on those major um, fault lines, fault lines, whatever you call them. And, you know, so I'm sure they have buildings that are earthquake proof and all that shit. But at the same time, if there is a 7.1 or a magnitude 6.4 to 7.1 earthquake that is taking place, you should feel something. And my friend told me he was like, it was hardly nothing that he felt. So that tells me that people who experience that, they're not in the same dimension as the people who experience the brunt of it. It's getting motherfucking real. People are creating their own realities and they are shifting out of this dimension and they're going into higher dimensions and higher vibrational planes of existence, okay? See, this is the power that we have as melanated black people. If we would stop, you know, all the fuckery and all the bullshit, we could really make some shit happen for ourselves on an individual level. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because I was absolutely astonished that he said he didn't feel, you know, he didn't feel anything hardly. And I'm like, nigga, how, how the fuck you don't feel nothing, you know? So I came to, the, to, to my own conclusion. I said, that nigga must be in another motherfucking dimension. And this particular person that I'm talking about, he is a form of Anubis, you know, of the underworld. Okay? So, you know, he's a powerful motherfucking nigga. And he told me he didn't feel hardly nothing in either of them. And he's in the vicinity of where these, you know, um, major quakes took place. But he didn't feel anything. So, again, that tells me that he's probably in another dimension. He has shifted to another dimension. And for those people who did not, those black people who did not feel anything, you're probably in another dimension as well. But we do see who the fuck is panicking over there, don't we? Hmm, that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, I want to talk about, now what I really wanted to get into and talk about was going back to American Horror Story Season 8. You know, that season, although I did not like the plot line as it played out, it had a lot of subliminal shit in it that I picked up on. And I've already talked about the Antichrist and all of that and how it's connected to Cthulhu, the great old one, you know, which is um, symbolic of the 
the subconscious mind in the black man and the black woman. I've already talked about that. But I want to touch on something else that I picked up on in American Horror Story and how it, you know, really um, it kind of validates what I have been suspecting all along. When they show us TV shows like Star Trek, The Next Generation, when they show us television shows like, you know, remember for, for those of us who are 90s people, you know, um, remember that show Stargate Atlantis and Stargate SG-1 and all that shit. You know, a lot of times when we look at te television shows that are depicting um, futuristic events, what I'm starting to really figure out, they're not talking about futuristic events. They're talking about shit that's happened in the past that has been hidden from us. OK. Let me say that again. They're talking about shit that has happened in the past that has been hidden from us. We've been lied to and we've been fed this narrative that these are things that are going to happen in the future. Well, the future is now. OK, this the future is now. We're in a primitive, you know, version of what they call the future because we don't have access to that type of technology. I know people say, well, they got t technology that they just don't tell us about. And that's all well and true. But that's all probably well and true, allegedly. Let me say that. But at the same time, when you look at these shows like Star Trek and you know, the next generation and like, like I said, Stargate and all that stuff, Atlantis and all that. They're telling us a story from the past. See, we're looking at it from a futuristic stance, from a futuristic standpoint. And they're telling us about something that happened in our past. All of the, you know, sophisticated technology that we've had in the past that is now slowly creeping back up upon us. Now, this is how it all ties into American Horror Story season eight. For those people who are American Horror Story fans, you know, it was the apocalypse. And the apocalypse is supposed to be this, you know, major battle. I'm not certain if the apocalypse is the same thing as Armageddon. I don't know, and I really don't give a fuck. But the apocalypse is supposed to be this major, major battle that takes place during the end of times. But what the apocalypse really is, is the war it has nothing to do with a physical war being fought on Earth. See, that's the, that is the distraction. That's the bullshit. The apocalypse is really the war that takes place inside of the mind between the black man and the black woman. The mind, I'm sorry. It takes place in the mind of the black man and the black woman. And the apocalypse is the, the war between the subconscious mind and the ego. Okay. Now, remember, I told you earlier that Cthulhu represents the subconscious mind. And in, and in, and in Egyptian, you know, uh, mythology, Horus represents the subconscious mind and Set represents the ego. Okay. But Cthulhu, remember, I told you Cthulhu. The great old one represents the sleeping subconscious mind, okay? And the ego is, you know, like I said, in Egyptian mythology, that's set. So the war is between the subconscious mind and the ego. Because the subconscious mind of the black man and the black woman is waking back up rapidly, okay? Now, <clears throat> in American Horror Story, season eight, the apocalypse takes place in the physical realm. Um, someone hits Los Angeles with a nuclear weapon of all places. Now, I'm just, I just, now we just finished talking about how these earthquakes that are taking place in Los Angeles. And in the mythology of Cthulhu, the great old one, he sleeps in the Pacific Ocean. So y'all pay attention to what I'm saying to you and how all this connects, okay? 
an American horror story, like I said, season eight, the first episode was the apocalypse takes place. A nuclear weapon is, is launched at Los Angeles and hits it and decimates the entire city. Okay. It's the end of days. And what happens is the survivors, they end up going to this um, underground bunker that was a that was once a boys school for warlocks, but they turned it into like a fallout shelter after the nuclear bomb had hit. And when they when you go in, when you when they went into this shelter, it was almost as if it was pre industrial times, no electricity, of course, and candles and people dressed dressed in Victorian era clothing, meaning 1700s, 1800s clothing. OK. So when I'm examining all of this, <laughs> I'm looking at this motherfucking shit and I'm saying, wait a minute. Was there some kind of nuclear war? See, first of all, let me let me say this. What they're not telling us, the reason that this planet is so fucking polluted is because there have been probably numerous, ain't no fucking probably, there have been numerous nuclear wars on this motherfucking planet that we don't know about. This planet has a long history of shit that has taken place. There have been, there have been civilizations upon civilizations that we don't even know about that have been destroyed. And then they recreate civilization and wiping out information from the last civilizations that had existed prior. So I'm thinking, could it be that the bullshit they're telling us about the 1800s and the 1700s being, you know, an era of no uh, technology and shit like that? Could it have been a result of some form of, you know, man-made cataclysm or man-made catastrophe like a nuclear war? Could it, could it have been? Because, see, they lie so motherfucking much. How do we know? Just think about it. How do we really know? How do we really know that there have not been countless nuclear wars on this planet? How do we know that the so-called Victorian era or the what they call the Dark Ages, well, the Dark Ages were in the, um, well, that's another subject, the Dark Ages. When they talk about the Dark Ages, was that because advanced technology was lost to the world? Wasn't that all around the time of, of the so-called Atlantis um, catastrophe? I don't even think that was the name of the continent, but I'll just humor y'all, Atlantis or whatever the case may be. The point that I'm making is that <laughs> what if, what if, just what if we actually had advanced technology in those times leading up to a cataclysm, you know, in the, you know, uh, 1700s. And that is why we had to revert back to, you know, no electricity, using candles, and reverting back to, you know, more of a, I guess you can call it more of a primitive state. Because I'm going to tell you something, the planet is polluted right now because of probably the countless motherfucker. I keep saying probably because of the countless nuclear wars that have probably taken place right here on this planet. And they've covered it up because what they do is they create civilizations. And then when the civilizations get too out of hand, and they start finding out the truth, much like this one, they destroy them. That's what they did in American Horror Story Season 8. There were some uh, young white boys who were tech um, geniuses, and they started nuclear wars with different countries. They, they were the ones who, you know, were able to tap into different countries' nuclear arsenals, and they were able to launch nuclear attacks. And that is what happened. That is how the apocalypse started. But when you really examine 
when you, I mean, take away all the bullshit and, you know, and all that, when you really examine what's really going on, they're telling us a story about our past that we're not paying attention to. See, we believe everything that they write down and we believe everything that they say. I remember I was looking at a movie called, well, this it's an old movie with Cicely Tyson and it's called The Autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. And for those people who don't know what that is, Jane Pittman was a um, fictional character. She was not a real person. She was a fictional character that um, lived to be over a hundred. And this white um, journalist, he wanted to come and do an interview with her because she was like over a hundred years old. And he wanted to know, you know, what, what was it like for her growing up as a slave during the Civil Because she, she grew up during the, she grew up as a slave and she uh, was around when the Civil War took place. You know what I'm saying? What I find interesting, what I find interesting in, in, in a scene in that movie, now I know people are going to say, well, that was probably just an editing, you know, uh, error or whatever the case may be. But in that movie, wherever they were filming, now, the, when they would go back and forth in time, because, you know, when Miss Pittman was in her hundreds, she was, it was in the 1960s, of course, during the civil rights movement, according to the storyline. But when they would go back in time, depicting her time as a slave and going and living through the Civil War, there was a scene when there was a car going down the street during the civil motherfucking war. Y'all heard me right. Now, I know a lot of people would say, well, that's just an, an, an editing era or something like that. But I look at it as them putting that car in there as some form of subliminal message because they do everything with a subliminal message. I could be wrong, you know, but I know I'm not. So, what the fuck was really going on and what led up to us not having electricity and stuff like that? You know, I, don't, I didn't give too, you know, last year, I think it was last year, I didn't give too much, you know, credence to it and I didn't give too much energy to it, but I was looking at videos on YouTube about a um, area in, I think it's in Europe, I'm not mistaken, I think it's in Europe, or close to Siberia, I, I, I don't know, I don't know where it is, but I know it's over there near Russia, you know, Asia, Eurasia, over, over, over in that way, over that way somewhere. They were talking about, a, there are videos on here talking about a continent called Tartaria. And they were talking about how this continent had modern day technology in the 1800s, electricity and all kinds of shit like that. So what the fuck is really going on? I, I mean, I guess we, I mean, I guess I can close it out by saying that what is really going on? I do know that they're lying to us about a lot of stuff. And I'm starting to figure that shit out and see American Horror Story season eight. You know, so many people were on here giving people who claim to be, you know, so-called um, this or that. They were on here giving their so they were they were giving their synopsis of the season, but they weren't talking about the hidden messages that were right there in front of your motherfucking face. And one of the one of the, besides the one about Cthulhu. The other main one that I saw is that the Victorian era, the 1700s or whatever the case may be, the reason we did not have the technology that, that we have now, you know, with electricity and all that stuff was because there was some form of cataclysm that took place on the earth and wiped out civilization and only a few people, only a few people survived. And that was the rich and the elite. And this planet is so fucking polluted. You know, the reason, see, they're not telling the truth. The reason that this planet is so polluted 
and so co and so corroded is because there have been countless nuclear wars on this planet that they're not telling us about. Why else would people be getting cancers and all this other bullshit? See, people keep thinking, oh, it's the food and it's this, it's that, it's this, it's that. But what if, and I'm not, I'm not disputing that, by the way, I'm not disputing that. That's all, you know, that's all legitimate. But what if there have been countless nuclear wars and not just the one, you know, not just the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki back in the 1940s during World War II. I'm talking prior to that. See, these fucking years that they give us, you know, 19 this or 2000 that, you know, th th that shit is nothing. That's more mind control. Once you break down those years to the common denominator or the, or the single number, you know, you'll realize what year we're really in. Like right now, we are in the year, it's 2019, so two, two plus one is three. Three plus nine is 12. One plus two is three. So we're up under the three vibration. We're up on, we're in the year three AD right now, again. See, these numbers and these years repeat themselves, you see. There's a certain pattern and they do certain rituals. OK, they do certain rituals and they repeat certain rituals. I'm finding out as well because and it's the oh, see now, now. Now check this motherfucking shit out now. Now it's getting interesting. Now we're up under the year three right now. American Horror Story. The next season. Season nine is titled 1984. Okay, now let me let me be sure. One plus nine is ten. Okay, ten plus eight is eighteen. Eighteen plus four is twenty-two. Two plus two is four. That was in 1984. We're getting ready to be in the year four again because we're, we will be in the year 2020. So do you all really think it's a coincidence that American Horror Story season nine will be entitled 1984? So we're going back to the number four again. We're going back under that vibration. That is why season nine is entitled 1984, because Ryan Murphy, he does occult shit, too. Whether people, I don't know if y'all know that or not, but he does occult shit, too. You see. See, we got to understand what's really happening. So. The past. What they call the past is really what we think of as the future. You see, and there was a movie that came out in 2002 called Time Machine. It was about this guy who lived in the Victorian era. He created a time machine. I think he lived in the 17 or 1800s and his fiance was murdered and he tried to go back in time to stop it, but he couldn't. So what ended up happening was he went like 80,000 years into, no, I'm sorry. He went like 900,000 years into the future. And he ran across a more, um, I guess you can say a more, I'm not going to say, I don't want to use that word. When he went into the future, there was nothing but melanated people. Okay. There was nothing but melanated people. The others were relegated to underground. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Another subliminal message right there. He was the only white man that was there. There was nothing but melanated people and everything had reverted back what people would call into primitive times. I didn't want to use that word, but everything had reverted back to like primitive times in the future. So what they're telling you is, is that we're really in a primitive time right now. The, this technology that we have right now is nothing compared to what they had in the fucking past. But they keep passing it off as if it was as if it's technology that's coming into the future. And that's bullshit. 
that was technology they had in the past. They're slowly reintroducing it to society. Okay. But that's all I really have to say. Um, I've been wanting to, you know, talk about that for quite some time, you know, because there was a lot of little shit in American Horror Story that I peeped in season eight. Although I did not like season eight, I liked the first episode of the season, but then it started to fizzle out. You know, I really wanted to see it because they had Joan Collins up in there, you know, Alexis from Dynasty. I said, oh, I got to see this motherfucking shit. What the fuck she going to do? Shit, it was the end of the goddamn world and she's up there drinking fucking champagne and shit in her fucking mansion talking about where are you telling asking her maid where are you going her her maid was like miss edie it's the end of the world i thought that was kind of kind of funny and shit you know but um you have to look at you have to go beyond what they're you know what they're showing you you have to really understand and i know a lot of people are not going to get it you know i know what i'm saying may sound crazy and maybe it is crazy but that's what i saw so the Victorian era and all of that bullshit that they keep telling us about and all of that bullshit they have programmed into our mind, brainwashed, mind controlled, spell, whatever you want to call it, all of that bullshit was just that. It was bullshit. We had technology similar to what we have now and probably even better until there was some kind of cataclysm on this planet. I'm not talking about Atlantis. Atlantis was one of many. There have been many cataclysms, and I'm thinking there have been eight major civilizations. I'm going by American Horror Story, okay? Probably more than that, but there have been eight. I'm, I'm going to say there have been eight major civilizations that they created, or eight major civilizations, and they were destroyed at some point due to some kind of purposeful cataclysm because once civilizations reach a certain level, these motherfuckers at the top, they want to destroy them. But see, they have a problem now. They're not able to do that as easy as they wanted, as they were before. See, that's the problem. Because there are people who don't want them to do that. You see? Because just like they're, they're bad elitist, they're also elitists that are, may not be necessarily good but they may not want them to do that. So see, they're bickering too with each other at the top because some of them want to reset. That's what it's called. It's called a reset on civilization. Reset. See, I saw something, and I'm not going to mention these people's channel because they they into some other type of shit. But they're very well known on YouTube. They probably got millions of subscribers. And they had something in the corner that said reset. So this is what they do. They reset civilizations and they wipe out all information from the prior civilization so they can put people up under mind control. And they tell you, oh, well, you know, Noah, for example, Noah and the Great Flood, you know, that was, you know, um, you know, two, um, Two animals of every kind that went into a, a wooden ark and all that bullshit. I'm gonna tell you something about that too. Let me let me bring that up too. And this is just what I'm seeing. First of all, if there was an actual Noah, it was not a male, it was a female. There is a movie on Amazon Prime called 40 Days and 40 Nights. Four plus four is eight. OK, and I just told you that I think that they have had eight major civilizations. I think this is the eighth one that we're on. OK, that's just me. 40 days and 40 nights was a was a modern day version or a futuristic version of Noah and the Great Flood. And in that movie, it's on Amazon Prime. I'm a subscriber of Amazon Prime. In that movie, of course, they had it as a white woman, of course. But in that movie, Noah was a woman. And Noah was a scientist that collected the DNA of every species on the planet to preserve because of the uh, cataclysm 
that took place. It was a natural cataclysm, according to that storyline, where it kept raining due to global warming or some bullshit. And they created an arc, but they created a more techno technologically advanced arc. Nothing like what they tell you in the Bible. It was a technologically advanced arc made out of metal. Okay? So if something like that did actually happen, they probably tweaked it and turned it into a biblical story of primitive people to put you up under mind control and to brainwash you. If Noah did exist, it wasn't a woman. It was probably, I'm sorry, if Noah did exist, it probably wasn't even a man. It was probably a black woman. Okay? It was probably a black woman and Noah was a scientist if that person existed. See, they put these little subliminal messages in, this, in these little movies and shit, especially these little B movies, and people don't pay attention to it. And the and see, the powers that be, the motherfuckers at the top who think they're making decisions, they know the public is stupid. They know the public is stupid. They know the public is going to believe whatever they've been taught through generation through generation. So what if Noah was really a black woman who was a scientist who saved the world. But because they don't want people to know that, they changed it into a biblical story and made Noah into a whole white man. Remember I told you how they changed a lot of these female deities into male deities. So it's, it's no surprise that they would do the same thing to people who may have been real historical figures. There have probably been many, black men too, of course, but there probably have been many upon many of black women who have had major accomplishments that we don't even know in this motherfucking world because the information has been hidden and lost to us. And we only have bits and pieces of what we think we know. Even over there in Egypt, they tore down. I was reading this book. Um, it was actually a book rep, rep, um, recommended by um, Mr. Hemet, Bobby Hemet, on his um, in some of his lectures. And there was a um, a temple in Egypt called Temple Seti One, if I'm not mistaken. And in that temple, it gave a lot of important information about white people their creation and their origins and during the ex during the archaeological expeditions of the turn of the last century which was the 1900s they you know took this information and they tore the entire fucking temple down to hide that information i'm just using that as an example to say it is no telling what information they have hidden from us and taken away. We only got the little bits and pieces of information that we have now. That's only the tip of the iceberg. And the, the reason I brought up the story of Noah, I'm, of course, I don't believe in no Bible shit, but I think that there are elements of truth in everything. There are always elements of truth, but they leave out certain things. But that movie, 40 Days and 40 Nights, that was symbolic of the Noah story in the Bible, that movie, from what I saw, they were trying to say that Noah was really a woman. They put a white face on it, but it was probably a black woman. For real. A black female scientist. Okay? So... <clears throat> The shit that we have been told, the, 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 the lies we've been told, you know, it has, it has permeated into our subconscious mind. It has permeated into our subconscious mind. But the thing is, we're waking up. We're waking up. And every t the, the more we wake up, the more distractions they put out. The more distractions they put out to keep us at each other's throat. And instead of us working on ourselves and expanding our own consciousness and going within ourselves and doing our own work, we're too worried about, you know, what the next motherfucking bitch or nigga is doing. You feel what I'm saying? So it's a lot of distractions out here. And at the end of the day, you have to really listen to what your mind is telling you.
And if you feel as though that something you're looking at is trying to tell you something, then you really need to pay attention to that. I have had count I've had countless, be honest with you all, I have had countless travels where I have where I have went back into, I don't know if I was going back into, you know, a, a past life or something, which a lot of times when we are dreaming, we're going back into past lives. Or we're going back into what we call the past. And not once have I traveled to the past where I have found it to be a primitive state where we didn't have technology. Okay? It's a lot more I can say about that, and I will eventually, but I don't feel like it right now. Okay? I have gone into the future. I have gone into dimensions or into time um, lines where I've been told that the earth is no longer here. I, I went into the um, year 21. What was that year I went into? 21, 22, I believe. And there were people actually living on the moon in colonies. And it was me and another black guy. He was my lover. This other black guy. He was my lover. He was somebody that I was really you know, close with in this in this travel. And I asked him, I said, where's the earth? He said, the earth has been destroyed. This was in the year 2122 that I traveled to or dimension that I traveled to where this in this timeline, because, you know, timelines are not set in stone. There's so many different dimensions that deal with certain timelines. You know, this timeline may be experiencing a total that 20. Well, what I'm saying is that 2122 may be experiencing a totally different reality than the 2122, let's just say, in dimension B. You feel what I'm saying? So there's so many possibilities. There's so many possibilities of what is going on. And see, you know, like I said, I've had travels where I have gone into these different realities and I've gotten certain information. Some people say that the planet that we're, some of the, the, uh, Entities that I've contact that I've come in contact with, they told me where you live at, it's really nothing there. That place is gone. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? So what they're saying is, is that this place is a projection. It's not really real. But we but most real occultists, we already have established that, that this is a place of illusions, you know. But anyway, if I can think of anything else to um to talk about, I will um, post a video. I just like to, you know, now that I can make videos again, because I have a new, you know, uh, system and everything, now that I can do that, you know, I'm going to be posting more and more videos about my experiences and the information that I'm getting from where, you know, where I go. Because I travel into a lot of dimensions. I've even gone into some of my future lives. You know, I went into a future life that I'm going to have in whatever, I'm not going to say where, but, you know, you know, I've even as, you know, even I've gone to even as far as, you know, I know where some of my loved ones have, you know, um, incarnated into another existence. There was one guy, one person um, that, you know, I really cared about who transitioned and he has another life in, let's just say in Asia. I'm just going to say that. I'm not going to say where because, you know, I don't want people knowing, you know, I don't want to say where, but he has another life in Asia. He, you know, he came to me and told me where he was and he has attached himself, you know, to a 10 year old little boy. I think it's a little boy. And um, he's experiencing that person's life with him. See, incarnations are not always about you being in a full body and you being in control. Sometimes you just may want to attach yourself to that person's consciousness and you can influence that person, you know, how, however you influence them. You know, it could be a negative influence or it could be a positive influence. Spirits do shit like that, you know. But anyway, um, that's all I really had to say on that.